You're listening to the My Pet Podcast, the show for pet lovers of Australia and around the world. Hi, you're listening to the My Pet Podcast. I'm Aria, and as always, I'm joined by our resident vet, Dr. Glenn. Hello. How are you going? Good. That's good. And we have a very special guest with us. We have Anne from Positive Connection. Hello. How are you? Good, thank you. So um, if you haven't checked out um, the episode previous um, that we did with Anne uh, about why dogs bark, um, go and have a listen or a watch to that one um, because there's some really great information. I learned a lot, so I'm looking forward to learning some more from you two incredibly smart people. (laughs) Uh, So this episode, we're going to be talking about barking collars and uh, specifically why you shouldn't use them. Controversial. Yeah, mm. yeah, it is. It, it, it is, isn't it? Very. Um, so it's a bit of a, a tough one. Mm. Um, and I guess the, the thing is uh, um, that, like, having a, a dog who is barking excessively or even not excessively can lead to really stressful situations, mm-hmm. right? Like, definitely. You know, the council can issue notices and neighbours. Yeah. Um, all sorts of like stressful for the dog, stressful for people. Yeah. yeah, and that's it. That's really yeah. stressful for the dogs as yeah. well. Yeah. And if you haven't listened to the previous episode, um, full disclosure: I have a dog with a, a barking problem, um, and um, so I'm going through the motions of this myself. Um, and <laughs> it's tricky, I guess. Like you know, I mean, if you guys may have experienced it when you you use this for your job, and then your own pet has these problems, it's a little bit confronting because you think, oh, yeah, gosh. I'm the first person to admit that dog trainers' dogs are not perfect. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. Exactly. Yeah. So I guess the reason I'm saying that is I, I want you to know that we're not coming from a place of judgment. We're really just genuinely trying to help people have Absolutely. the best outcomes. Absolutely. Just trying to help people and their yeah. pets. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Um, it, because it's a stressful situation, people – often you know want need want or need something to happen quickly yeah um out of desperation or or whatever it is yep so that's where um i I guess i i to a lot of people i talk to who are wanting to go down that path are are looking at that sort of that's where they're coming from yeah um but it's stressful for the dogs too right to put a barking collar on them well or the barking well (laughs) both yeah yeah i think yeah i think you're right i think people uh, get pressured by uh, neighbor, particularly neighbours and neighbourhood disputes that can be very stressful and awful. Yeah. Uh, they, they worry that their dog, um, that something might happen to their dog as well. Um, so someone might be throwing things over to stop them barking and, you know, it can get really nasty. Uh, so people definitely are looking for quick fixes sometimes and that's what I would class barking collars as, unfortunately, as, as that, that quick fix. Um, but I'm going to... I'm going to be controversial straight off the bat and throw the guilts on everybody and say that, um, do you really want to do that to your best friend? Do you really want to shock them? Do you really want to do that to them? Mm, have a think. Yeah. 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 So, um, like, I guess, so the reason, the, the, the biggest reason, I guess, or one of the first reasons, maybe not the biggest, because there's a lot of big ones, right, that you shouldn't use bark collars is... Um, because it's a form of punishment. Yeah, right. So they work by applying something that the dog doesn't like, so what we call an aversive. So whether that's a spray, like an unpleasant smell or a shock, so obviously an unpleasant sen- unpleasant sensation, to reduce a behaviour. So we're adding something to reduce the behaviour. Yeah. Um, so it's just like me, if, if you were talking at me and I, you know... <laughs> slapped you or something and said stop it you know like that's it's applying some sort of aversive to you to to stop you from from doing that behavior yeah Mm. um and are they painful yeah they have to be to they have to be to work yeah yeah Yeah. so you know for anything for a behavior to be reduced it has to be something that the dog doesn't like yeah um and that's and yeah often with i mean with the citronella collars you're, it's un, unpleasant, like it's a yucky taste and, and all that sort of thing. But it's actually, don't forget that it's actually on the, stays on the coat all the time. So the dog's got that all the time on them. Yeah. Um, and then a shock is um, extremely stressful, yeah. for a, particularly if you have a sensitive dog. 
Um, and then if we go back to that last podcast that we did about um, why dogs are barking and if there's anxiety and stress-related barking, then adding something like a shock to that is unbelievably, uh, I want to say, cruel. Yeah. 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 Um, and, like, I think I, the other the thing with the citronella ones that I think is, like, my dog, his nose is so sensitive yeah. that he can smell, like, food from a mile away. Like, I'm, yeah. I always joke that if there's food within a one-kilometre radius or anything food adjacent, he will find it. Yeah. So I can't imagine what it would be like for dogs to have that st- – because I don't like the smell of the citronella yeah. spray. Yeah. So And it's, like, so much stronger for them. Yeah. They have millions more scent receptors than what we do. In, in their in their nose, so like it would um, be overwhelming. Very, yeah. yeah, I think that's a good word to describe it: overwhelming and unpleasant, and the whole bit. Yeah. yeah. Aside from the unpleasantness, they're just kind of not the most effective way to do it. Right. So we're not addressing the underlying cause yeah. of why the dog is barking. Again, if we go back to that last podcast we did about why dogs bark, then we we're really just kind of going. We don't really want to know why it's barking. We're just going to put this on it and hope that it reduces it. Yeah. But if we want to have effective behaviour change, we need to find out the cause, why something is happening, and then work on work through all these processes to try and change the behaviour effectively, um, long term, in the dog's brain, rather than just going like applying something quickly to to stop it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, so um, rather than I guess applying a punishment to reduce the behavior you want to um like give them something positive to do instead or like you know make a positive change in their life yep to which you need to kind of like address uh the problem like the cause of it to do yeah um and the collar is not really going to address any of these nope (laughs) no yep not at all (laughs) not at all (laughs) basically just like someone if, if your dog was a person and they're telling you, oh, I'm happy about something and talking about it, well, if you just tape their mouth shut, mm. well, that's pretty much what the collar does, just stops them being able to say what is yeah. troubling them. That's pretty profound, actually. Mm. Mm. That's a pretty profound way to put it. And if yeah. you were unhappy about something, someone just taped your mouth shut, that doesn't make your life much better. No, mm. probably mm. worse. Mm. And we have to remember that barking is normal for dogs. Yep. Yes. Very normal. So, yeah. So, yeah, so obliterating the barking, yeah, it's not good. No. Um, but there are other options. We're not negative Nellies. Like I said, we um, are going to do another episode with all the ways, different ways to do things. And, like, there's some stuff you can actually do for free. Like you do, And you could say more than anything, I think you can save money because these things are, are not, um, not cheap. Um, but um, one of the other things that I've heard you talk about, Anne, is the fallout. So um, what can go wrong from these color collars? So, yes. you know, like someone might say, oh, you know, you should use a black collar. It worked for my dog. But did it really? Yeah. So it's a really good point. So uh, we often deal with the fallout of the use of barking collars and, and it can be quite, um, quite sad, actually. And what the biggest thing we find is that because dogs learn, well, all animals learn through two ways, and through association and through consequence, that often when you're using a barking collar, they, the dogs will receive the, either the spray of citronella or the shock, and they will associate that with not just their barking, but with other things as mm-hmm. well. So the biggest thing we see is uh, dogs associating another dog in the household near them when they get that aversive shock or, or spray and they think that that dog has done that to them yeah. so particularly when dogs are really um, highly aroused and wound up and um, so maybe they might be running up and down the fence line barking at something going past the fence and they get a the collar starts to work and they turn to the other dog and say let's say they're like you did that to me and then you get actually you know, dogs actually having fights and things yeah. like that. So you get that redirected aggression. Worse, you can, well, I don't know what's worse than that, but you can actually, so for example, if there's a child walking uh, outside the fence and the child might be, um, you know, rattling a stick along the fence and as kids do, and the dog starts barking at the child, they get a shock or a spray from the collar. And then all they think about is that, I hate children. That's what you are doing that to me. 
and so they start feeling having negative feelings towards children yeah so whether it's you know whether it's inside the yard with your own um, other other pets other animals um people children all that sort of thing or outside the yard dogs can make associations very very easily very quickly and then they can there can be lots of fallout from that so um and i've i've definitely had that situation where do- two dogs has been into household aggression between two dogs because there was a barking collar involved in that yeah um, i actually had an experience of this when i was a little kid um i was walking my dog with my mum and somebody had a german shepherd that had a bark collar on and we found out the reason that they had only just got it recently um the, the collar brought the dog rather and um yeah the dog was barking running up and down the fence barking at my dog and then um jumped through the dog and attacked my dog um it was really bad like he was he was okay he had to have surgery mm. um but it was really horrible um yeah. for everybody involved yeah. um so um yeah i've so, seen it firsthand yeah it's causing a lot of stress in the dog that has the collar on um yeah. so i often like to use the example of um a game of soccer players on a soccer pitch and the, i'm sure that there's a video out there of this but they um, put shock collars on the players the humans and they were shocking them for random reasons that the players couldn't figure out why so whether it was did they touch the soccer ball did they kick the soccer ball did they um you know run did they walk like they couldn't figure out why they were getting shocked and it just created just ridiculous confusion and stress because people were like i don't know why i'm being shocked for i don't understand it and um, their stress confused um and then anxiety increases and then they end up just going i don't know why and then maybe i'll just sit down and shut shut myself off and yeah not do anything it's almost like you know mm. it's kind of almost like bullies at school like <laughs> i was bullied at school i'm a massive nerd i'm not afraid to admit that but it's like you know they would be like passive aggressive or snickering at me and or like and you'd be like well i don't know what what's their problem like what what are they picking on now i don't know i'm just scared of them all the time yeah it's kind of that same thing where you, yep. you don't know yeah and dogs dogs make the most interesting association and they're really good at it oh yeah like my dog knows the diff my dog knows that if i put makeup on that he's probably getting left at home because i'm probably coming here to do this right and i don't want him here while we do this because he's gonna bark yeah yeah <laughs> so for sure he gets yeah. like literally this morning when i started putting my makeup on he's sitting in the bed looking miserable at me he's like oh i'm gonna go yeah but he knows if i like if i put on my my hat and my boots yep that we're going out in the paddock we're gonna have a yep. good time yeah yep. So yeah. they're very clever at associating things, yeah. but then you, you, there's not really a good association with the collar because, okay, there's the barking, but there's like a ton of other stuff. That's happening. exactly right. Yeah, a ton of other stuff is a good way to put it. So yeah, other things happening, as I said, other people, things, lots of things going on Yeah, um, that can actually increase barking in the long run, actually. That's right. It's potentially escalating the problem in the yeah. first place. Yes. Um, yeah. With that list of why do dogs bark? I mean, anxiety disorders and, and fearful things. Well, if you give them something that increases their level of anxiety and increases their fear, um, that's very counterproductive. Yeah. 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 It's just going to, like, it's really just going to make it worse. Yeah. 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 Um, It'll make the dog feel, I mean, even, even if it stops barking, it still makes yeah. the dog's life a lot more miserable. Yeah. 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 Um, and it's yeah it's really like you were saying it's a band-aid solution right so it's you know putting a band-aid on a big old wound yeah it's not really gonna you know it's it might stop a little bit of the problem but yeah um long term it could just make it worse yep that's right so we want to really look at um at why these why barking's happening and then look at, look at the causes and then look at the proper effective behavior change um, of which using a barking collar is not uh, is right at the very, very, very other end of that behaviour change model. So yeah. we, we go right back to, um, which we'll talk about in another podcast, I'm sure, but, yes. yeah, um, just right back to let's really look at why it's happening and then start to change the, the environment and various other things. And Yeah. yeah. But yeah. there are just so – there's so many other places to start. Um, and, and I – like – in all honesty, I have been in the situation where I was in a rental, my landlords were the neighbours um, and they were complaining about my dog um, and 
um, I got a collar that um, just has a vibration setting because mm. I didn't want to shock him. And I used it a couple of times and um, I, re I really regret it. Mm. I, I knew better, but I was desperate. And that's why I never judge people. And I'm probably going to be judged for even saying that I did this. But I, I guess I, I want to be open and honest. Yeah, absolutely. That, yeah. Like, um, it's an understandable situation. Yeah. And also from, from my own perspective, I've seen how much it didn't work for my dog. Like, mm. he's a herding breed. He was just wanting to chase stuff because that's what he does naturally. And um, he he's a, quite a sensitive dog and quite a fearful dog. And um, I didn't even, like, honestly, even just the vibration, the second time I got the thing out, he just looked at it and he just boom, shut down. Like, yeah. and yeah. I just, I, that was when I just, yeah, I was really cross with myself for doing it. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, the, I, I get where people are coming from yeah. when they're really desperate, but we want to give people hope that there's other options out there. Yes. Are so many, much better for so many different reasons. Yeah. I think one of the things that um, I want to mention also is that if you're having troubles with your neighbors, to write a letter to them from your dog because it's kind of cool if it's from your dog and really explain that you understand that there's a problem and that you are going to do everything in your power to change the behavior and fix it and just buy some time from your neighbors and just try to let them know that you're going to actually work on it and yeah, yeah that can often help a lot um, and gives gives people a, a little bit of time to just you know look at some behavior change and things like that yeah mm. and I think I, I'm not I'm not sure but I think even in terms of you know if if the council come knocking at your door and you've already started to make some changes then they're gonna give yeah. you a little bit more leeway I, I think, would imagine I think so yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Um, but um, it can also be stressful, you know, just for the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like if you have someone who works shift work in the house or yeah. something. Um, so there's a lot of options. Yep. And we are going to run through all of them in another episode. So, um, yeah, thanks for sharing your knowledge, you guys. Is there anything else you want to touch on on this topic before we sign off? No, I think it sort of covers it. I mean, the main thing is there's, there's other op better options um, and just educating people that potentially – if you know there's other options like de-escalating the problem before it starts, before it gets to, I need a bark collar to keep the council off and back um, because there's ways to um, train your dog to bark less. Yes, mm. absolutely. Yep. Agree. Well, um, hopefully um, we can um, help you guys with um, a potential problem and give you some ideas of where to start and give you a little bit of hope that um, there are some things you can do to make your life and your dog's life and your neighbour's life uh, much more pleasant and peaceful. Sounds good. Good. Thank you. And thanks, you You're guys. Welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> thanks. Bye. Thanks, guys.